It's back to school time again, and for many parents, it could be harder on them than it is for their children. Experts say the beginning of the school year is a perfect time for parents to establish new habits that will help their kids make the most of their time in school. Founder of Spirit of Purpose and author Teresa Moore Griffin joining us now to talk about the five back to school tips for raising a happy child. Hi, Teresa. Hello, Joyce. Thank Thanks you for, for coming me. in. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, let's get to those five tips. Number Number one. Number one is to help your child distinguish between can't and won't. Very often we do it as adults as well. We say we can't do something when the truth is we won't do it. We're not trying. We're not motivated. And when we can't do something, we really can learn. And if we're not motivated, we can also find ways to motivate ourselves. And well, we can motivate our children to learn just as well. Well, how much does fear play into that? And that's one of part uh, two, tip number two. Right? Absolutely. So parents oftentimes will have their fears roll over and play a part in their, in their children's lives. And the encouragement is to not let your fears ruin your child's experience. If you're afraid of having them do something, just take a deep breath, relax, get full information, and do what you can to allow your child to have their experience. But some parents can't let go. They have to control. Too often, too often, too often we want to control. And the truth is, you know, we want our children to be safe. We want them to be happy and well adjusted. And things happen in their lives. Our job as parents, parents is to help them learn from those experiences in addition to having them do all the things we want them to do. So how do you do that? Be a part of their experiences? You be a part of their experience, absolutely. And if you have fears, talk with your child about what your fears are. Share with them your concerns and see what they say. Sometimes your concerns are enough to talk them out of it, but at other points they're really well committed and they will stay the course. When that happens, take a deep breath, back up, and let your child have him or his or her way. Now this one sounds too. like a tough one. How do you get them talking to you? Because you usually go, hey, how was your day? Fine. The one word answer, absolutely, and that is a tough one. Uh, one of the things you can do is set up the conversation as the child is leaving for school in the morning. So you might say something like, so you and Mr. Wood have been having a little challenge in class. What are you going to do today to give yourself a good day in Mr. Wood's class? So you have the child make a declaration. When they come home, the question is, so how did your plan work? How'd it go? What did Mr. Wood say? And express genuine interest. So you have to get more than a one word answer from there. Yes. How about experimentation? That's always a tricky one too. I think uh, oftentimes, especially if we are individual adults who don't like to experiment ourselves, but a big part of our job is to give our children the opportunity to really expand and grow. And the only way to do that is to experiment and to not allow any labels that we have about what people like us do get in the way of encouraging your child to stretch out and try new things. So the, basically the whole idea is to make everybody's life a little easier and make it beneficial for the kids, right? Absolutely. Make the transition good for everyone. All right. Thank you so much, Teresa. My pleasure. Moore, Griffin, we want you to check out myfoxphilly.com under Scene on TV for more of Teresa's tips. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you, Good Joyce. Good stuff. Thank you. All right. Well, New Jersey lawmakers.